know what you, I done told you, you wanted it. Good evening. I'd like to call the Durham City Council meeting to order. I uh, certainly want to welcome all of you that are here for us this evening on Monday the 17th at 7 o'clock p.m. If we just take a moment for silent meditation, please. Thank you. Ask Councilman Davis if he would uh, introduce. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we're going to be led in the pledge, we're honored to be led in the pledge tonight by uh, three young men from Troop 461 at the Epworth United Methodist Church. May we rise. Madam Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Mayor Bell. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Cole McFadden. Councilmember Davis. Councilmember Johnson. Councilmember Moffitt. Councilmember Reese. And Councilmember Shule. Before I go to the 
podium, I was told that the voting machine is not working, so we'll be voting by show of hands this evening. We have several proclamations that we'd like to uh, present this evening. Uh, the first is the Neighborhood Spotlight recipient. And as probably most of you know, this is an award that's given by uh, Neighborhood Improvement Services to a resident chosen by a member of their community to receive the award. Now tonight, is Ms. Cheek here? Hey, will, you, will you join me, please? <coughs> Ms. Cheek is from the Edgemont Elms community. You come up. Uh, the last time we saw her was at a PAC meeting, I think, right? Yeah. And then, uh, unfortunately, we're not able to be here the last time, so we're like, doing well this time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the neighborhood re the uh, proclamation reads, the certificate is, this certificate is awarded to Alice Cheek in recognition of valuable contributions to the Edgemont Elms community, serving as co-facilitator of PAC-5, organizing events for neighbors such as National Night Out, a campfire with Santa, and neighborhood cleanups, and canvassing and sharing information in her community among some of the things that she does. And it's signed by Thomas J. Bonfield, city manager, and myself, William V. Bill Bell, and it was dated March the 10th and March the 11th. And tonight we're presenting it to Ms. Cheek, and certainly want to congratulate her, and I don't know if you have any other community residents that are here tonight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and well, that's important. Grandson. Will the husband stand up? Right? <laughs> and my grandson. And the grandson's right. Thank you. You want to say anything? I just want to thank y'all for uh, giving me this award, letting me know that my work was not in vain, and I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Oh, you got. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is Steve McNulty present? Steve is from the Milan Woods community, and again, he's a recipient of the Neighborhood Spotlight Award. Uh, this certificate is awarded to Steve McNulty in recognition of valuable contributions to Milan Woods, such as organizing annual neighborhood events to bring the community together, developing a relationship with the Durham Police Department, and strengthening the neighborhood watch, and introducing new neighbors to the area via welcome packet and sharing relevant information from the PACs and other groups with neighbors. Again, it's signed by Thomas J. Bonfield, city manager, and myself as mayor of the city of Durham. And we want to present this to Steve for any comments. I don't know if you got any of your, your neighbors here. Yeah, there is. Well, let the neighbors stand up if you don't mind. He said none of them will stand up. Okay, I'm going to present this and you can make comments if you want. Well, I guess he wants to do the picture first. Thanks, Steve. Do want to thank everyone for this recognition. Um, Rob, who will be coming up next, actually has got a bit more of a more formal response to this. But again, thank you very much, and we appreciate it. And we have another one of his neighbors, Rob Corns. If you would join us. <coughs> Again, this is the Neighborhood Spotlight Award, and then this certificate is awarded to Rob Corns in recognition of valuable contributions to Milan Woods, organizing annual neighborhood events to bring the community together, again, developing a relationship with the Durham Police Department and strengthening the neighborhood watch, and introducing new neighbors to the area via welcome packet and sharing relevant information from the PACs and other groups with neighbors. Again, it's signed by the city manager and myself, and I'm going to present this to Rob and for any comments you might have. We've got to do the picture first, right? Thank you. 
since Steve sort of said I was going to say something, I guess I will. Um, I, first, I want to thank everybody for this recognition. Uh, it really and truly is not so much about myself and Steve, but it's about the community where we live, which is Milan Woods. We just happen to be the two people that have the bigger mouths, I guess you could say, out there. Um, but we couldn't do what we do without assistance from others, and like I said, this is about our neighborhood and those who have assisted us over the years. So I would like to give three very quick shout outs, if I may, to our management company, Representative Cheryl, who is back there in the back. We've worked with her for well over double digit years. We have developed an extremely great rapport, and that has enabled us to make a lot of progress out in our neighborhood with our residents. I also want to give a shout out to the various city departments. Over the years, we've been fortunate to work with representatives from transportation, stormwater management, neighborhood improvement services, zoning, Durham One Call, water management. Whenever we've had an issue and needed to reach out to them, we've been very fortunate to get good information back and been able to address our issues. I do want to also single out two city council members who have always responded when we do have to uh, send something to you when sort of all else fails, and that is Councilman Shule and Don Moffitt. We thank you very much. And we have been a part of the Neighborhood Watch program in our neighborhood for over 20 years, and for the majority of that, we've coordinated the efforts out there, and we have developed an extremely close working relationship with the Durham Police Department. We know there's been a lot of changes over the years, but the one thing that has remained a constant is the good relationship and rapport that we have with them. So I want to thank them for that. And for anybody who is looking to make a difference in your neighborhood, a good place to start is to first get out there, meet your neighbors, know your neighbors, look out for your neighbors, and attend the Partners Against Crime meetings for your district. There's a lot of information available at these meetings that you can get, take back to your neighborhoods, and I promise you your neighborhood will benefit from it. Thank you. Uh, Rob, we appreciate those comments. And I, uh, first, we all obviously want to thank Neighborhood Improvement Services for implementing this award. But I think what's important is that we constantly say strong neighborhoods make for a strong city. And people such as are here tonight, uh, the city is made up of neighborhoods. And uh, the stronger we can have as neighborhoods, the stronger we have more people involved, uh, the stronger will be our city. So we appreciate what you do. And you certainly honor us by allowing us to present you with awards such as this. Uh, we have the Week of the Young Child Proclamation. Uh, it's Laura Vinson. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, well, let, let me just acknowledge it. Uh, at pro appropriate time, we will uh, present it to Laura. But it speaks to, among other things, that whereas early childhood from birth to age five represents the most critical time in children's development and is the foundation for success in school and life according to the National Association for the Education of Young Children, whereas early childhood programs support children and families as they prepare to enter school, whereas comprehensive bilingual evidence-based programs in par par parent education and literacy increase family stability, whereas the Durham City Council do hereby proudly recognizes that the ages of birth to five are the most critical time in children's development which builds the foundation for the success in school and life. Uh, therefore, I, William B. Bill Bell, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby proclaim April 24th through April 28th, 2017, as the Week of the Young Child in Durham, and hereby recognize Durham's Partnership for Children and other early childhood organizations for the exemplary models of collaboration, which continues to improve the landscape of early education for Durham residents and benefits present and future generations. With my hand, the Court of Civil City of Durham, this is the first day of April 2017. At the appropriate time, we'll present that to Laura. Thank you. Uh, next, we have <coughs> Women in Math Mentoring Day Proclamation. And this has been presented to Paula Sloan, the co-founder of Women in Math Mentoring Program, and she's available if you mind joining us. <coughs> Uh, the proclamation speaks to the fact that over 20 years ago, data, sh data showed there was a gender gap in math. Girls with an interest in math tended to lose that interest in middle school. 
but girls who had mentors with math-related jobs would tend to stay on the math path. Whereas currently there's still a gender gap, a study shows that girls who are interested in STEM subjects tend to lose that interest in mid-high school and it never comes back as girls report they can't see themselves in STEM careers. And whereas for 20 years the Women in Math Mentoring Program, known as WAM, has connected over 1,260 eighth grade girls in Durham Public Schools with women in STEM careers, whereas Durham Public Schools recruits eighth grade girls for WAM and provides support and North Carolina Central University is the home for WAM, whereas WAM is a well-organized program consisting of orientation for mentors, students, and their parents, field trips to universities and businesses involved in STEM, a career awareness day, math competitions, scholarships for summer enrichment opportunities, whereas the Women in Math Mentoring Program will continue to encourage eighth grade girls to learn about careers in STEM fields and to study hard and prepare for them. Now, therefore, I, William B. Bell Bell, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby proclaim Saturday, April 29th, 2017, as Women in Math Mentoring Day in Durham. Hereby urge all young women to raise their awareness of STEM careers. And with my hand, Corpus Hill, City of Durham, North Carolina, this is the 17th day of April, 2017. We're going to present this to you and certainly for any comments that you might have. Thank you. Um, thank you. We're very excited that we've reached 20 years and we plan on at least 20 more. So if you know eighth grade girls who might be interested in having a personal relationship with women who have STEM careers, um, please let us know and let them be a part of this. It's a great program. It's a lot of fun for both students and mentors. I see you got Laura Smith involved in it. You really got a great mentor. I appreciate that, Laura. I didn't know you were involved in the program. You are involved, right? Other than taking pictures. Okay. Uh, the next presentation is for, is for Chief Chef Lucas, doing good with Food Day proclamations, and Lorraine LaJane Carson, Director of Campus Relations, Art Institute, Raleigh Durham. If you join me, please. CHEF, whereas CHEF Lucas Food is a nonprofit organization founded in Minnesota during the fall of 2015 by Lucas Hobbs as a selfish wish to use food trucks to communicate his appreciation to the community that supported him during his battle with cancer, whereas CHEF Lucas understands that good food can help strengthen families and communities during difficult times. This is achieved by forming charitable com partnerships with the food industry and promoting pediatric cancer awareness, whereas Lucas' goal is to support pediatric cancer families and organizations that serve them through the power of good food by visiting one children's hospital in each state throughout the United States, whereas Lucas Food and its partners organization, Massive Amount of Good, specializes in supporting food-inspired events of nonprofit organizations that serve cancer medical-related causes. And this is all made possible by the generous donations of local individuals and sponsors Whereas in North Carolina, specifically, Durham Chef Lucas is collaborating with Duke Children's Hospital to continue its mission of doing good with food in each state by providing a meal at no cost. Whereas the Art Institute of Raleigh Durham American Tobacco Campus, Durham Marriott City Center Law Offices of James Scott Farron, North Carolina Sweet Potato Commission, John Bell Juice, Ed's Q, Gussie's, Portington Fully Loaded Fritters and American Party Reynolds have all joined forces to support Chef Lucas in the Durham effort. And now, therefore, I, William B. Bell Bell, Mayor of the City of Durham, do hereby proclaim April the 28th, 2017, as Chef Lucas Day, doing good with Food Day in Durham, and hereby encourage all residents to support and uplift the children, families, and caregivers of those battling pediatric cancer. And with my hand, the Corporate Seal of the City of Durham, North Carolina, this is the 17th day of April, and again, I would like to present this to you for any comments that you may have. Thank you. The Art Institute. It's important. <laughs> I'm honored to um, accept this on behalf of Chef, Lu Chef Lucas, and I'm looking forward to working with the hospital to support uh, patients, caregivers, and their families. Thank you very much to the city for this wonderful honor and proclamation.
uh, next proclamation speaks to National Community Development Week and ask Reginald Johnson, Director of Community Development, if he would join me. And I'm sure Reginald's going to tell you a lot about why this is important, but Community Development Week annually recognizes the importance of community development block grant and home investment partnership home programs. And both programs are proposed for elimination under the new administration in fiscal year 2018 congressional budget. And I can tell you this is something that uh, mayors across the country are very, very supportive of trying to keep CDBG alive. And it serves so many communities in so many positive ways. And uh, it's one of the things that has made Durham as successful as it has been in trying to revitalize some of our neighborhoods. So the loss of that program would, in a sense, be devastating to a lot of the things we're trying to do, not only in the city of Durham, but throughout cities across the community. Uh, I'm not going to get into a lot of details. I'm going to let Reginald speak to that. But basically, this proclamation uh, proposes April 17th through April 22nd, 2017, as National Community Development Week in Durham in support of these two valuable programs, the HOME program and CDBG program, that have made a tremendous contribution to the vitality of the city's housing stock and economic vitality of our community. And with my hand, Corporal Seal, the city of Durham, North Carolina, this is the 17th day of April, 2017, and I'll present this to Reginald for comments that you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council. Thank you as well. Uh, our first thing I would like to recognize is the members of the Citizens Advisory Committee, which is appointed by the County Commission and the City Council that advises the City uh, Department of Community Development on community development matters. I would like the members to please stand. Thank you. We, we, we appreciate their service, and would you say your names, please? Thank you. Thank you for your service. Uh, Mr. Mayor, it is not a uh, loss upon us that this will be the final proclamation that we will receive from you for Net Community Development Week. And we want to thank you for your support of community development in Durham. Uh, we actually have a wall with all of the proclamations uh, on it, and this will be the final one that we will add. And we just want to thank you for your service. As the mayor indicated, uh, home and CDBG are important, important to the city of Durham. Uh, many of you will remember the East Way, a village revitalization project where we created 46 units of home ownership opportunities uh, and transformed the entire block. Uh, this would have been, not been possible without home dollars. We've revitalized targeted neighborhood, neighborhoods through the support of Habitat for Humanity. We were able to meet the former President Obama's challenge to end veterans homelessness uh, through the creation of uh, Denson Apartments for Veterans Homelessness, and that was also part of home funds, using home funds. Uh, the City of Durham has used home funds responsibly, as well as CDBG funds, and we have been recognized nationally for the work that we've uh, done. Eastway Village, Denson Apartments, the Southside Revitalization Project, including the bungalows at Southside and the lofts at Southside, have been the recipients of awards from the National Community Development Association and the National Housing Finance Agency. The CDBG and home programs are just important today and in the future as they have been historically over the years. We need these programs to continue to develop affordable housing and to meet the needs of Durham residents. Just to be a little bit more specific, uh, more, more than 300 housing units have been created to date with these projects. We've had millions of dollars and leveraged millions of dollars in private uh, equity. We've created hundreds of jobs, and we could, there's continuing private sector investment surrounding the city's investment in Southside. And as I mentioned, we've been recognized nationally, as well as in the state of North Carolina, for the great things that are happening in Durham. So again, I want to say thank you for everyone for their support.
and our last proclamation, but not least, is uh, certainly important, uh, Earth Day proclamation. And I would ask Ms. Romack and Rhonda Parker, both from the Durham Parks and Recreation Department. Uh, oh, Ms. Womack is here. Is, is Rhonda here? Okay. Uh, proclamation speaks to the fact that humankind is currently facing tremendous global challenges affecting every community, including large-scale migration, extreme inequality and poverty, degradation of ecosystems, mass extension of species, and global climate change. Whereas all people of this earth, no matter the race, gender, income, sexual orientation, national origin, have a right to a healthy environment. And whereas it's necessary for the citizens of our global community to develop green jobs and to build an innovative and equitable green economy to combat the aforementioned global challenges, whereas expanding environmental education and climate literacy is vital to enhance awareness about the environment, inform decision making, and protect future generations, where it is more important than ever to act locally and to cooperate internationally and defend environmental pro progress that has been heretofore gained, whereas Earth Day is an annual reminder of the constant need for environmental activism stewardship, commitments, and sustainability efforts. Now, therefore, I, William B. Bill Bell, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do have I proclaim Saturday, April 22nd, 2017, as, 2000, as Earth Day in Durham, and hereby I encourage our residents, businesses, and institutions to use Earth Day to celebrate the Earth and promote environmental and climate literacy. Again, what's going to hand the Corporate Civil City of Durham. This is the 17th day of April, and I'm going to present this to Mr. Womack for any comments you might have. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We are surely excited at Parks and Recreation to celebrate Earth Day. Earth Day is actually on Saturday, but we will be celebrating on Sunday at the beautiful Durham Central Park from 12 to 5. If you will look in the back, we will have some cars that you all can pick up and get more information on the website. We're really excited about all the events. We have something for everyone. If you know a little bit about recycling and conservation, we have stuff for you. If you know a lot, we have things for you as well. Everybody can come and learn something that day, whether it's new products or just how to recycle. What does it mean? What is composting? Whatever it is, you can come and enjoy. The children will have things to do. We have tons of activities for the kids. There will be an Earth Day parade that will happen, and all the instruments that the kids make out of recycled products will what be what they use to participate and make plenty of noise in the parade. We have a partnership with a shredding company. So if you have documents that you would, confidential documents you would like to shred for free, we will be there with that company in a special spot for you to bring those items because usually that does cost, but we are offering it absolutely free. So we're really excited about all the things we're gonna have and hope that you all will join us. Thank you. Let me ask if there are any comments by members of the council. Mayor Pro Tem. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, I would just like to announce that we're going to start a letter writing um, campaign to the members of Congress. From our, uh, and the letters will be coming from our youth regarding the CDBG funds and how they impact the lives of children in this country. All right, are there any other comments? If not, I recognize the city manager for any priority uh, Thank items. you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. No priority items. Uh, likewise, city attorney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No priority items. Uh, likewise, city clerk. No items, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Uh, we'll proceed with the agenda. Uh, the consent agenda consists of items that may be approved with a single vote by the council if a member of the council a member of the audience chooses to pull a consent agenda item. Uh, we will speak to that later in the program. And again, I'll just read the heading of each one of the consent agenda items. Under the Durham Planning Commission appointments, consent agenda item one, 
Item two is boards, committees, and commissions attendance reports for the period of January 1st, 2016 through December 31st, 2016. Item three is a request to extend the construction phase maturity date of the Durham Community Land Trustees Inc. Home Forgivable Construction Permanent Loan Agreement. Item four is establishing a service area and service area fee for the Farrington Road Waterline Extension. Item five is Wilson Street Delivery Creek Outfall Sanitary Sewer Repair and Replacement Project Contract Award to Hydrostructures PA. Item six is interlocal agreement for phase eight of the Triangle Area Water Supply Monitoring Project. Item seven is agreement for watershed protection with the Conservation Trust for North Carolina. Item eight is the budget recommendation for a 10.01 transform transformation in 10 initiative. Item nine is utility extension agreement with Epcon Farrington LLC to serve villas at Culp Arbor subdivision. Item 10 is the encoders upgraded managed services with Granicus Inc. Items 13 to 18 are items that can be found on the general business agenda as public hearings. Entertain a motion for the approval of the consent agenda with exception item nine. Second. It's been proper move and second. All in favor of the motion, make by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion passes unanimously. Uh, move to the general business agenda, public hearings. <laughs> item 13 is unified development ordinance, text amendment, mass grading buffers. Thank you very much, Michael Stock with the Planning Department. Uh, before I begin, uh, the Planning Department certifies that all required notification related to the Planning Department public hearing items uh, has been performed and are on file for review. Uh, specifically, TC 160006 is a text amendment to Section 9.5 of the Unified Development Ordinance, or UDO, to revise current mass grading buffer standards in accordance with state enabling legislation, and that state enabling legislation is attachment B of your packet. In consultation with the City Attorney's Office, the amendment does the following things. Uh, it increases the width of mass grading buffers to the amount allowed by the statute, and that is uh, goes from 32 feet to 65 feet when adjacent to developed properties, uh, increases it from 0 to 32 feet when adjacent to undeveloped property, and increases it from 50 to 65 feet and along a public right-of-way. Um, it also revises the buffer standards to focus on protection of existing vegetation, removing the requirements for supplemental vegetation, and it also indicates that it applies only to the city jurisdiction. Uh, the amendment also adds a definition of grading to section 16.3 of the UDO. Uh, the Planning Commission recommended approval 13-0 at its February meeting, and as a reminder, Council will be required to take two actions. The first will be an action on the ordinance amendment itself, which is attachment A, and the second would be an action on the appropriate statement of consistency found as attachment C. Uh, thank you, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Okay, this is a public hearing. You've heard the staff report, the public hearing is open. We'll ask first other questions by members of the council on the staff report. Hearing none, uh, again, this is a public hearing. Is anyone in the audience that would like to speak on this item as presented? Uh, let the record reflect that no one in the audience has to speak. I'm sorry. Threw me off. Uh, no one in the public asked to speak. The record reflects that. I'm closing the public hearing. No. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Michael, could you uh, talk a bit about um, the uh, additional work that I believe the planning staff is doing around tree preservation and uh, some of the uh, tree removal issues that are, are kind of tantamount or tan tandem to, uh, to to this uh, discussion around mass grading, mass grading and buffers. Sure. Um, this text amendment was actually born out of discussions with JCCPC back at the end of last year, I believe it was November or December uh, meeting. Um, and uh, there were two uh, actions that JCCPC asked the planning department to undertake. One was to uh, do what we're acting on tonight, um, is to increase the width of mass grading buffers. And then the second was to look into ways of uh, uh, the issues of mass grading in general or the costs and benefits towards it and then to initiate future discussions on uh, what policy directions uh, uh, we would like to go forward with in regards to that, that such site preparation and how it uh, would impact tree preservation and such. Mm -hmm. so, so could you speak to the timing of the, uh, the request that had also been made earlier in the year about looking at the tree ordinance and tree removal? 
issues. We're going we're gonna to be bringing up the, mass, the broader issue of mass grading in general uh, to JCCPC at its June meeting, its next meeting. I recognize Councilman Shule. Appreciate that. <clears throat> and thank the manager for that, for that uh, clarification. And you, Mike, sure. thank you. Um, it just uh, this does lead me to uh, remind, it reminds me that uh, there is a, a forum, Trees Over Durham Forum, which is being held and co-sponsored by the city, General Services, uh, on uh, April the 25th from 2.30 to 8 o'clock at the Durham Arts Council. Uh, it's free, dinner is free, and we have, a, uh, 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 we have a great program about preserving trees in Durham, but replenishing our tree canopy and making sure that our tree canopy is equitably distributed across all of our neighborhoods. And uh, so I urge anyone interested in Durham trees, uh, not only to pay attention to this mass grading ordinance, but to come out on April 25th uh, for all or part of our program. And you can go to treesoverdurham.com to find out more and to sign up. Um, so thanks for the time to give that free advertisement, Mr. Mayor. Um, I do want to just note that without the requirements for uh, planting specific vegetation and for opacity levels, uh, and since this removes the county from mass buffering requirements, as I understand it, uh, I, I want to note, given that, I, I really want to note favorably the comments of Planning Commissioner Brian Busby and his written comments on this, that this, this, it, this is a change that we need to make, but it is also a mixed bag. Um, as we bring our regulations into compliance with state law here, we are getting wider buffers for our developments, and that's good but they're no longer required on projects that are outside the city limits within the county of Durham, and we're losing our ability to, re to require specific vegetation at opacity levels. And this is a problem. Uh, those are our regulations that I think have served us well. Uh, I, I appreciate the manager's uh, comments earlier about the next step in this process, and I hope we can strengthen our mass grading requirements with the next step uh, in the review of these uh, policies uh, as mandated by the JCCPC. So, I'm voting for this, but uh, I recognize it brings us into compliance with state law, and I recognize it does some good things, but it is a mixed bag, and I just wanted to point that out. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Um, and I would just like to add, um, just that, so it's not all bad news. Um, so mass grading buffers are generally temporary buffers around the site preparation, or if, if it's a kind of a standalone site preparation. It doesn't impact project boundary buffers, which allow the use of existing plus additional vegetation. So ultimately, any projects that require permanent project boundary buffers, we still have the ability to require specific opacities, additional vegetation, and such. Well, I, in fact, when I started to say something when we had the work session, and it's too late. It would be interesting to see how this would have impacted two areas that have been mass rated along North Carolina 54 and Barbie Road, which was, I mean, it's just horrific what was done there. And of course, I'm, I've gotten the plans, and I was here when I, when I approved it, so I can't go back and fault anybody but myself. But uh, when, when, I, when I saw what was done to that area, uh, I just think it was atrocious, and I just hope that the planning that comes along after it's been done will uh, hopefully make that place look a lot better. But that, that was, it was just terrible. And what's happening is you know, all the animals are leaving. Uh, in fact, my neighbor told me he saw some coyotes <laughs> And in, 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 in the back of my yard near a pond. But, you know, the deers don't have a place to go. All the wild animals are going places. And uh, that's happened on, on that area. And it's also happened along Grandale, which is another area that was mass graded. So I, I just, just hope that in the future we have, have better concerns as to how we allow developers to go in and move property, move dirt, move land, tear down trees when, when they start their development. But, I appreciate your comments, and we move on. Uh, if there's no further comments, I entertain a motion on item. I'm sorry, did, were you pointing? Did you have a comment? I did. You did? No, no, no. Oh, okay. Uh, I said move the item. Second. It's been proper to move and second. All in favor of the motion, and can be saying aye. Aye. Uh, Those opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. We have to do the second piece. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> It's been properly moved in a second. All in favor of the motion, then kept by saying aye. Aye. 
Those opposed, the motion passes unanimously. I recognize Councilman Moffitt. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I wanted to just um, take a moment uh, and do something that's not really my place to do, but this is the first council meeting where we've had a new planning director, and um, it's, it's easy to overlook since he's been here for so long, but I just wanted to recognize uh, uh, Pat Young, Patrick Young for um, stepping up to the role. So. Thank you, Council Member Moffitt. It's my great pleasure. I saw you fixed your email signature. Good job. <laughs> Appreciate that, because sometimes we take, take things for granted. Pat has been here almost like an institution, but thanks for the acknowledgement. Mr. Thanks Mayor, he says time. it's been a great pleasure. It may not be a great pleasure for long, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, next item is item 14, Consolidated Annexation for Islamic Association of Raleigh. Good evening, Jacob Wiggins with the Planning Department. Um, a request for utility extension agreement, um, voluntary annexation initial zoning has been received from the Islamic Association of Raleigh for one contiguous parcel located at 3104 Page Road. Um, if this request is approved, the applicant intends to construct a place of worship at the subject site. There's a site plan currently under review for the place of worship and the Board of Adjustment approved a minor special use permit for this use in September of 2016. Staff is recommending an initial zoning designation of residential rural, which is an exact translation of the existing county zoning designation. If the, these requests are approved, the annexation will become effective on June 30th, 2017. Uh, Public Works and Water Management Departments performed the utility impact analysis for the utility extension agreement and determined that the existing city water, or, excuse me, city of Durham water main has capacity to serve the proposed development. Uh, the budget and Management Services Departments performed a fiscal analysis, which did indicate that the request will likely become revenue negative, which is not necessarily uncommon for places of worship given their tax exempt status. Um, staff recommends that the council approve the utility extension agreement, voluntary annexation, and initial zoning, as well as a consistency statement. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you all may have. Again, this is a public hearing. The public hearing is open. You heard a staff report or questions, comments from members of the council. Recognize Councilman Shule. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was wondering if there was a member of the Islamic Association of Raleigh who was present to answer a question. Do you know if there is, Jacob? I believe so, yes, sir. To come up to the, could one of you all come to the podium, please? How are you? Welcome. Um, you. My question is, uh, is this an additional facility to, facility to the Raleigh facility, or are you moving everything to this new campus? No, this is additional to Raleigh facility. Okay. Uh, I just want to tell you all that uh, my students have done community service projects at the IAR, tutoring, uh, helping to maintain the cemetery, preparing burial shrouds, and I myself have participated in on this on several occasions. My students have also participated in dialogues and panels with members of the IAR and at your Raleigh Masjid at school. And I just want to say for those of people in the room that don't know the IAR that you are a very wonderful and welcoming community. Thank you. And I want to say to my colleagues on the council and to everyone else in the room that if you ever have a chance to be at the IAR uh, on a Friday evening when the community comes together and is serving food, I recommend it highly. It is a wonderful, wonderful welcoming community and I just want to thank you for making my students so welcome over the years. I, uh, and I hope you'll give my regards to my friend, Dr. Rufai Abdullah, who facilitated our work there. Sure, and sure. Uh, just want to say uh, how glad I am that you'll be here. It's really nice to have the Islamic Association of Raleigh coming to Durham. So thank just you. thank you very much. That's all I had, to, had for you. Thank you. Thank you. It's our, it's our honor to be here. And you'll find us as good neighbors. Thank you. Are there other comments by members of the council? If not, again, this is a public hearing. I would ask, is it anyone in the audience that would like to speak on this item? This being a 
public hearing matter. Uh, let the record reflect that no one asked to speak. I will declare the public hearing to be closed. As a matter of fact, for the council. Second. It's been properly moved and second. All in favor of the motion, again, by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion passes Move unanimously. Move consistent it's been properly moved and second. All in favor of the motion, indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you. We move to item 15, consolidated item for Church Hill Commons. Thank you, Jacob Wiggins, again with the planning department. Um, this is a request for a comprehensive plan amendment and two zoning map change requests, um, which have been received from Tri Properties LLC for two properties located at the southeastern corner of South Miami Boulevard at Page Road. The subject side is designated as industrial on the future land use map and is currently zoned industrial park. The applicant is proposing to change the future land use map designation to commercial and rezone the site to commercial general with a development plan for the majority of the subject site. Uh, there is a small parcel along South Miami Boulevard, which is proposed to be rezoned to commercial general with no development plan. A cemetery is currently located on this parcel and no modifications or development is proposed for the cemetery piece. Some key commitments on the development plan associated with this request include site access points, a building and parking envelope, project boundary buffers, a range of 150,000 to 275,000 square feet of commercial use area, and roadway improvements along Page Road and South Miami Boulevard. The Planning Commission recommended approval of both of these cases by a vote of 13 to 0 at their February 14th, 2017 meeting. And staff recommends and notes that while the site is currently located in a compact neighborhood, it is not along the proposed Durham Orange light rail line. And at this time, staff is not pursuing implementation of the compact design district in the area. Um, with that in mind, staff determines that the requests are consistent with the comprehensive plan and other adopted policies and ordinances. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you all may have. Again, this is a public hearing. The public hearing is open. I would ask, are there questions by members of the council? Hearing none, uh, we have one person that signed up to speak on this item. Uh, that's Patrick Biker. Before Patrick comes, let me ask, are there any other persons that want to speak on this item? If not, uh, you have five minutes. Yes, sir. Good evening, Mayor Bell, Mayor Pro Tem Cole McFadden, members of the City Council. My name is Patrick Biker. I live at 2614 Stewart Drive. I'm an attorney in Durham with Morningstar Law Group. I'm here tonight representing Tri Properties for the Churchill Development near Research Triangle Park in southeastern Durham. With us tonight are our landscape architect, Bob Zumwalt from McAdams, and also Rob Griffin, the Associate Director for Development with Tri Properties. We are here tonight to request your approval of a plan amendment and a zoning map change to support new office space and new restaurants near RTP in Imperial Center. I trust that members of the City Council are familiar with the Quintiles Building and the outstanding track record Tri Properties has as one of the leading office developers here in Durham. Now they need more inventory so Durham can recruit more businesses to our city. But a key ingredient to recruiting new businesses is new quality restaurants. I can tell you, having worked in this section of Durham from 2006 to 2016, there is a strong demand for quality restaurants. You can see from Tri Properties' solid track record with Mez and Page Road Grill and the unrelenting demand from customers of those fine establishments that more sit-down restaurants are needed in this section of Durham. That is why we are here tonight to respectfully request your approval of this plan amendment and zoning map change. In closing, we do appreciate the unanimous recommendation from our planning commission, and our team will be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much for your time tonight. Thank you. Are there questions of the developer? Now, let, let me ask the, the staff, are the mass rating rules going to apply to this site that we just um, Jacob Wiggins of the Planning Department. The mass rating rules would not apply to would the not. site. Uh, well, what we have now currently would apply in the ordinance today, but the item you heard earlier this evening would not apply to the site. So, Patrick, tell me how you guys going to develop this stuff. It's got a bunch of trees on it. What, what kind of? It'll be one, I believe, one large office building. Hi, Bob. One large office building, five, four stories or five? Five-story office building. And then we'll have out parcels with uh, 
uh, several sit-down restaurants so that uh, the people in the office building can walk to uh, get their lunch with uh, easy, convenient walk. The trees are the trees going to be left on this property. I, I know this area pretty well. There's nothing out there now, but the, you do have some trees on this site. So what, what's happening with that? Well, we're certainly leaving the trees around the cemetery, and then we're putting. Um, and then I guess we're committing to the other project. Is there a project boundary left for Bob? You, you, you can come to the microphone if you want. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mayor, members, Council, Bob Zumwalt with McAdams. Um, the site is, um, it, since it's in the compact neighborhood tier, the, the tree save requirements are applicable in the compact neighborhood tier. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the site is already, uh, the building is already up for the office building. It, it was allowed under the current right. zoning. So the office building's already under construction. Site's already been graded. So the, the zoning is just to allow the restaurants well, Maybe, to maybe I'm not sure about this. You, you said the site has already been graded? Yeah, it, the building's already mm -hmm. been erected, yeah. mostly well, what's erected. What's the picture we got? What, what, is, what is the picture you're showing here of all these trees? Yeah, Jacob Wiggins with the Planning Department. Yeah, the, the existing conditions sheet in front of you. So this was submitted concurrently with the site plan that the applicant had submitted, but they were, they were able to have both of you So this isn't, this isn't the current picture, the aerial that, that you're showing. Um, are you referring to the development plan sheet or no, the I'm aerial photo? I'm talking about what we got in the area that we have in our attachment three yeah, that we have. it's probably not current. Is it, when was the, the aerial photo in your packet is from 2013. Yeah. Well. All right, Pat. Yeah. We, we don't need to have these kind of drawings coming up in the public way. Mr. Mayor, members of council, Pat Young with the Planning Department. Yeah, as, as the applicant indicated, they um, had approval under the previous zoning, meaning the zoning that's in place prior to the action you all uh, may take tonight uh, to construct the office building. So the aerial photography and the um, existing conditions map were the, what was in place when the application was submitted. But as uh, Jacob just indicated, they submitted a site plan at the same time they submitted this application, which they were allowed to do under the existing zoning on the site. So they've begun construction and, and, and clearance of that uh, portion of the property. I don't know if there's been any clearing done on those out parcels or not. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. So the, clear, the, 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 the work on the site began in December. So at the time we were, I'm not sure there's even probably an, a an aerial available that's new. Yeah. Okay. I was just going to ask, is the office building that's now under construction, mm -hmm. is that what's shown as uh, CS, I think it's CSRA Newcastle North? Well, I'm, I'm just trying to fit it in the context of this rezoning. Can you, yeah, if you pull up what you have so you can reference. Newcastle North's an existing one-story building adjacent to the site. Is the building under construction on the property that's currently being considered for rezoning for CGD? It is, correct. Okay. That's, I'm, I'm fine. I'll, Mr. Mayor, may I say one, one more thing? As, as Mr. Stock indicated when he was presenting the mass grading item, the mass grading buffers only apply to uh, properties that are being speculatively graded and prepared for sale prior to development approval. Once development approval is in place, applicants can, can grain the site and then replace the ex existing vegetation with constructed buffers, basically planted buffers. Um, as um, Mr. Stock indicated to the manager's inquiry, that is part of what we're looking at very closely about whether we're going to require uh, preservation of existing vegetation either in all cases or in some cases. Uh, right now, we incent that. We provide significant incentives, meaning you, you have to do, uh, you can have smaller buffers if you retain vegetation, but we don't require it. So part of the white paper that will be coming to Joint City County Planning Committee will look at this issue in detail. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, the public hearing is closed. Entertain a motion on an item. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. All in favor of the motion, they can be saying aye. Aye. 
Aye. Aye. Those opposed, the motion passes. Unanimously. Second. It's been properly moved and second. All in favor of the motion, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, the motion passes unanimously. Item 16, zoning map change for Fendall Farms Fowler Assembly. Good evening, Jacob Wiggins again with the Planning Department. A zoning map change request has been received from Bob, Bob, excuse me, Bob Zimwalt with McAdams for, a, for approximately 420 acres located north of Leesville Road and east of Doc Nichols Road. The subject site is currently zoned Plan Development Residential 3.000 and was zoned such in 2006 while in Durham County's jurisdiction. The applicant is requesting to change this zoning designation to PDR 2.993. Some key commitments shown on the associated development plan include side access points, a building and parking envelope, project boundary buffers, a maximum of 1,200 1, residential units. Um, the applicant is also committing to age restrictions and roadway improvements along Leesville Road, Doug Nichols Road. The Planning Commission recommended approval of this case by a vote of 12 to 0 at their February 14th, 2017 meeting, and staff determines that the request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and the other adopted policies and ordinances. And I'm happy to answer any questions that the council may have regarding this item. You've heard the staff report, it's a public hearing. I would ask first of their comments by members of the council question. If not, we have two persons that are signed to speak. Uh, one is Neil Gosh, and other is Rob Emerson. Are there other persons that would like to speak on this item that have not signed up to speak? Uh, in that case, we hear from Mr. Emerson first. I mean, Mr. Gosh first. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Bell, Mayor Pro Tem, Cole McFadden. My name is Neil Ghosh, and I live at 4 Silverwood Court here in Durham. I'm an attorney with the Morningstar Law Group, and I'm here tonight representing the applicant or the uh, property owners for this rezoning. Phil, to indicate, we'll start with five minutes on this. Thank you, Mayor Bell. Um, we have with us tonight our landscape architect, Mr. Bob Zumwalt and uh, representative from the ownership group, Ame Carlson. I'll try to be brief as staff has already done a great job explaining the project. Thank you for that, Jacob. Uh, the primary purpose of this rezoning is to add an age restriction to the community. Uh, we're not seeking additional uh, density or more units on the property. Um, I would like to, on the record, modify commitment or committed element eight to clarify its intent. Uh, I'll read it to you, but you can find it on the cover page of the uh, development plan. It's commitment number eight, or text commitment eight. Currently it reads, uh, prior to issuance of a building permit, dedicate an additional 10 feet of right of way for the frontage of the Fowler track, existing PID 0860033313314 along Doc Nichols Road. A copy of the recorded plat must be submitted with the first building permit application. Uh, as drafted, the commitment could be interpreted to require the 10-foot dedication prior to receiving a building permit for any portion of the property. Uh, we would modify this committed element to make clear that the 10-foot dedication is required prior only to new development on the Fowler portion of the property. So we would propose the following modification. Uh, prior to the issuance of a building permit for existing PID 0860033333314, dedicate an additional 10 feet of right of way for the frontage of the Fowler track, existing PID 0860033333314, along Doc Nichols Road. A copy of the recorded plat must be submitted with the first building permit application for existing PID 0860-03-33-3314. Uh, this modification has already been uh, reviewed by staff, so I just wanted to read it into the record. My understanding was that it would be uh, an appropriate modification to make to clarify the uh, intent of this committed element. 
Uh, I'm sure staff will be able to speak to that. Uh, I think I've stated already we have with us our landscape architect and um, member from the ownership group, so uh, we can answer any questions you have. We would respectfully ask for your approval of the request of rezoning, and we thank you for your time. Welcome to questions by members of council at this time. If not, let's move to Mr. Emerson. Mr. Emerson, you have five minutes also. Yes, sir. Good evening. My name is Good evening. My name is Rob Emerson. I'm uh, also a landscape architect. I live at 1202 North Gregson Street in Durham, and I'm here tonight representing Preservation Durham. I'm currently um, the president of the board of directors of that organization. Um, Along the Leesville Road frontage of this development is uh, a farm, and the, the development has been named after the farm which belonged to Mr. Fendel Bevers, who was the um, Wake County surveyor who drew the original map for Durham County when it was carved out of parts of Wake and Orange. Um, this is one of a handful of pre-Civil War buildings left in Durham County, and it is remarkably intact, or at least it was a few years ago which was the last time uh, we had staff in there. Uh, we named the Fendel Bevers Farmstead to our places in peril in 2012 and have worked. Uh, we spent a lot of time trying to find someone willing to move the house. We had a memorandum of understanding with the prior developer. Um, we think, of course, as we get to the 11th hour, we do actually have someone interested, again, in potentially moving the house. Um, to another historic neighborhood in East Durham. Um, so I'm here tonight to ask, um, first of all, uh, I would be re remiss not to ask for this house to be preserved where it is. That would be the best outcome, to preserve this uh, remarkably intact and unique historic asset and the outbuildings that support it where it sits. Um, it affects two parcels of this 1100 parcel development. Um, and is on the edge, and its preservation would not require uh, changes in access points or other substantial changes. But failing that, we would ask um, for a little bit more time um, to work with the, the folks we've got who are very interested in um, moving this house despite the um, extremely high costs. Uh, we've estimated it would cost around $50,000 to, to move this house from where it sits to um, east, the East Durham neighborhood. It's actually East Main Street. That's all I have. Thank you. Could, could I get a better understanding? You said it's along Leesville Road. Is that where? I'm trying to look at this aerial map. I guess this aerial map is OK. Uh, the, the Fendel Bevers Farm, yes, is on Leesville Road, on the Leesville Road frontage along one edge of the development. Can, can you point it out, by Patrick, someone? Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at attachment two in the... Uh, I can point it out if there's a map. I, I assume you've had this conversation with the developers before, or you have not? Is this the first time you're hearing this? I've not had any comment or any conversations with the developers. Um, our staff, our executive director is out of town. Um, ben has been in contact with the prior developer and with um, a gentleman who I believe still works for the new property owner. I'm, I'm just trying to get a sense as to what prior conversations have been had. Is this a last minute request? If I could speak to that. Um, the, so I can only speak to what our, the current owner, our client, has done, and, and they've worked with Preservation Durham for uh, years to try to find a suitable site and buyer for this house, and it hasn't panned out over the years. I can also uh, refer back to the original zoning condition um, has been in place for more than 10 years, and there just has not been um, any interest in the marketplace for that. Uh, to hear at this point that there is some interest. This is the first time we're hearing about it. Uh, was earlier today from uh, a, an email. Uh, but to hear that now is, I mean, honestly, it's re remarkable. I mean, we haven't heard of anyone interested in this site for, you know, 
since it's been rezoned. Uh, but unfortunately, we just don't think that it would be able, we'd be able to commit to preserve this home at this time given the uh, ongoing development at the, at the property. Currently, blasting is underway on the site uh, and is, could damage the property, so we would not be comfortable committing to preserve the house at this time because the blasting that's underway could ultimately damage the home. It is a, it's an old, home, old wood home that hasn't been lived in for more than 10 years. So we really cannot speak to the structural integrity of it and would not be comfortable committing to, uh, to preserving it at this time, although we have tried uh, in concert with Preservation Durham to, to preserve this house. So where, where's the house on the? I'm not sure quite how to point it out. It, You've got a mouse right here. Oh, I see. Right That's, here. Mouse That's it right there. Right here. And I should clarify, I'm not here in opposition to the rezoning. We don't, I don't oppose the rezoning. We are asking, I think, for some more time because, as I said, we do have some folks who have moved historic properties. They have land to move it to. They have money, and they are very interested. And I understand that this is uh, late, apparently, coming to you. It's my understanding that staff has talked to representatives of your um, of the developer's organization. Thank you. Recognize, is that, who's the Councilor Shule? Councilor Shule. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I wrote Neil earlier today, uh, and as he mentioned. Um, so just one thing I want to say about this house, just to, the reason that I think it's important is there's probably only, it's probably one of the 10 oldest houses in Durham. This is not an insignificant historic property. And so I think that's the reason it matters. I mean, they're, they're historic properties and then they're really historic properties and you've got one there. Um, and I totally understand, I, I appreciate, and one of the things that you didn't say is that you all have offered to give the home for free to anyone who will take it. And you have offered to, as I understand it, uh, have a driveway made a construction driveway that people could drive up and take the house and, and leave with it. Is that, am I right? Yeah. So I want to appreciate that and I, I recognize that you all have been working uh, with Preservation Durham over a period of time, a period of time and, and I know that that's been in good faith and I appreciate it. I know there have been discussions about it. Um, I think there, there are two uh, issues that I have heard from the Preservation Durham folks recently. Uh, one is that um, that they now feel that they have someone who might be able to take it. I understand you might be skeptical of that. Uh, but uh, again, I think that it, the question is, is this property important enough to take a little extra time? And then uh, the second is the possibility that uh, the developer would help, uh, if, since the developer is not interested in preserving this extremely valuable historic asset, just in terms of its age, uh, that the developer contribute to the uh, moving of the, of the house uh, that would make it more possible for this potential buyer to uh, relocate it. So um, we have lots of precedent for that. I mean, recently the, um, the Durham Rescue Mission offered $5,000 per house to move some small houses a very short distance uh, in East Durham, and we have other precedents for that. This is a, a, a thousand unit development and um, a very, very large development. Uh, and it would be my hope that you all would consider both um, giving some more time to Preservation Durham uh, as well as uh, perhaps offering, you know, I, uh, as I suggested to you today, Neil, perhaps you all could fund half of the moving, moving cost if up to, fit, up, you know, your half, if the moving cost was, what, that you all would uh, pay for half the moving cost up to, say, a total of $25,000. I don't, you know, I'm voting for this rezoning. I want to make that clear. I think that what we're doing here is changing this to an age-restricted uh, over 55 neighborhood is what we're mostly doing. I am planning to vote for it. I heard the Preservation Durham folks say they're not against it, but I do wish, and I understand what you're saying about the blasting. Maybe it'll knock the house down, I get it. 
Uh, but I, I think that giving some more time and thinking about offering some support uh, would be a uh, would be uh, valuable as a as a civic contribution. This is a very we don't have this this house I believe was built in 1849. Uh, this is a significant historic asset. So those are my thoughts. Uh, I, as I say, I'm not I'm planning to vote for this. I think that the, the redevelop that this rezoning deserves my support and our support. But I'd also hope that you will. Uh, think about how you could uh, help make this possible. Let, let, let me follow up because I was trying to one find a little bit about the house. But the other question is, you say you have a place to relocate relocate the house. I, I guess the concern I would have is I will have another problem. I heard just something about over in East Durham or somewhere. With yes, sir. Uh, I don't think I'm speaking out of turn. Uh, the, the, the folks, the developers are uh, Renovision, Nick and Victoria Broccolo, who we recently um, brought to the table. Um, the uh, block of East Main Street near, I believe it's Guthrie, um, had started to be cleared. There were four or five houses and three or four of them were demolished. We brought them to the table and they have, they have acquired those properties they have restored the one house that hadn't been torn down yet or in the process of restoring it. And uh, they have several parcels there in their ownership. Um, and that is where I believe they would move this farmhouse to. Let's well, see, what, what I would not want to happen, assuming that the developers were in support of allowing you time to move it, I hate to see you get to a place where suddenly you got people saying, we don't want this house in our neighborhood. Uh, and so that's why I'm trying to be more specific as to where you're talking about moving the house. And is this something that the planning staff has looked at, that the site would be okay to have this type of a home come into it? No, sir, we haven't reviewed that. This, this is a, unfortunately, this is a fairly recent development. Okay. Well, let, let, let me say, I, I heard what Steve, Steve had to say. I, I plan to vote for it also. And this is new additional information. That's what, what I was trying to find out how long this has been in the discussion. Uh, I, I, would, I would leave it up between you and the developers to try to figure out if you could work this out. I'm not so sure there's anything we could do as a council uh, to, to stop it anyway if we're going to do the rezoning. But I, I, I would hope that it, you would take some time to see if you can try to work this out. But more importantly, uh, I, I think you need to know is the place that you're talking about moving to is going to be acceptable because I don't want to come back before this council somebody beating us up saying why'd you let the thing come down neighborhood so I recognize Councilman Moffitt thank you Mr. Mayor the question I have is we've been talking about something that's somewhat I can't get my hands around it uh, we're talking about a little bit of extra time how much extra time if, if, if the applicant was willing, how much extra time would Preservation Durham be hoping to get? Um, I would say we could know the answer to Mayor Bell's questions about the suitability of the other lots. Um, I assume that since there were recently other structures on them that there's enough land there for this, this structure to be uh, relocated to. I think we could have an answer on that within a week or two. As far as scheduling the actual moving of the house, that's something that I'm not an expert in, I would say. Um, I mean, certainly I don't think an open-ended um, time frame would be reasonable. 90 days, 120 days. Well, it, it seems like the first question is, is it suitable? The second question is, is it feasible, right? That's a whole, that's a second set of issues, which is, how much is it going to cost to move it, restore yes, it, and does the person that you have in mind, when when it gets down to it, are they actually going to do it right? Because the applicant doesn't want to. So when I, if I were the applicant, I would not want to say, "Yeah, we'll wait as long as you want." I would not want to say, "We'll leave it sit here for 120 days." If we get to 120 days, it's not. So there'd be a, how soon can you determine? suitability how soon can you determine feasibility that's what you have what you need to be asking the applicant to consider right right yes sir you i think we would know that fairly quickly once we had a house mover look at it and plan the route i think they would be able to determine 
um, certainly within a month um, if it were feasible and suitable. Well, I'm, not, I'm sorry. I'm just thinking about this. I'm just, I'm just wondering, as sort of a moderator here, whether or not you, whether or not the applicant would consider saying, "Look, if you tell us, you commit within 30 days that you're going to take it, and you have it off the property within 90 days, but I don't know what your schedule is, what's going on there. So, um, and how long? And how long has this been going on? My name is Ame Carlson. I'm with uh, one of the property owners, our REF2 FC NC Sierra. Um, this is an unfortunate situation. I mean, the home is is very historic. It, 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 the owner of the home, you know, had, a, had an important role here in Durham. However, it is at the 11th hour, and unfortunately, the home is, is in our way right now. Um, so we, we are out of time. Um, 30 days, 90 days, any amount of time is going to delay us. And, you know, as, as you all know, um, this project has had some ups and downs and it has started and stopped. And, and I think imp suggesting that we would hold off again is just really not what we need. Um, what we have worked through with the state um, is documenting the home, uh, photographing it, um, and there will be a, a nice uh, display within the sales center and then eventually in the clubhouse, really kind of speaking to the history of Mr. Bevers um, along with the home and having uh, some, some backup information on a website where someone can continue to research it in the future. Um, and we would, we would ask that you understand that we've taken the time to try to find a likely uh, buyer, someone who could take the, take the home. We had it advertised for over two years and there were no takers. And um, mind you, the two years that I'm referring to is a year and a half ago. So for you know almost three years, there's been no interest. And then today, we're finding this out. And it's just, it's unfortunate. I hear that. So one more question. When you say you had to advertise for two years, just so that I know, how did you advertise it for two uh, there years? There are two ways. Um, there was big sign on Louisville Road, house available. Um, ironically, I actually saw some stuff on social media, like Country Living Magazine picked it up. And we worked with Preservation Durham um, on their website. It was advertised. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Councilmember Moffat, if I could just add one other point. The original zoning condition did require a $15,000 subsidy from the development team to move the house. So even with a $15,000 subsidy that was put in place in 2006, no one was willing to undertake the, the task of relocating this house. May I approach him? Um, good evening, uh, is, sir. Have you made contact with the leadership in East Durham about your plans to move this car, this mm, house, anywhere there? Ma'am, I, I have not. Our executive director, Ben Filippo, lives on East Main Street in East Durham, and I know he's had those conversations. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here tonight, so I feel like I have one arm sort of tied behind my back, but. Um, I know that Ben has had those conversations, and I'm confident that he has also had conversations with people who at least he believed were representatives of, of this developer. This is not new information, although they have worked in good faith. They have made commitments. We have advertised it for a long time. We had folks lined up that fell through. We've got some real people and some real property, and we just need a little bit more time to see if this one falls through as well. We hope not. But. Yeah, I'm concerned about the move of that house to East Durham without knowing uh, what the leadership actually feels about it. Okay, thank you. Okay, I have one more question. Um, given the historic nature of the home, I don't know anything about it, haven't seen it, but I'm assuming that um, there are materials in it that are historic in nature. There are people who use those materials. So if it does come to I know that you're planning on using a, a few pieces of the house, am I right? You're planning on using a few pieces of the house like in the commons facility. But other materials there, are you just going to plan and bulldoze it, take it down in pieces, make the materials available? What's, what's the plan for the... We plan on 
we plan on uh, preserving a number of elements from the home um, in the clubhouse. Um, we have been approached by uh, some folks who are interested in basically harvesting some of the other material, like the wood flooring and stuff. So I, um, potentially, yeah. If, I mean, it's a, it's a timing issue, really. Had you finished? Oh, yeah. Other other comments, questions, recognize. I'm sorry, Councilwoman Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, could y'all go over your reasons for not wanting to preserve the house where it is on the site? Yes, it's been a project that's been, um, as I mentioned, it was originally approved in uh, 2006. And so all the lots have been platted now for uh, the initial phase. That's about 160 acres. And so where the house is located is in the uh, first phase that's uh, under, under development right now. And so, uh, again, it goes back to the fact that 10 years ago, we thought somebody would probably, probably would take the house with a $15,000 um, subsidy to relocate it. Uh, unfortunately, events didn't work out the way, I, the way that I think everybody wanted them to. So it's, it's not possible to preserve it in place. It's um, uh, unfortunately something where time has moved on and, and while everybody tried their hardest and uh, there's certainly documentation to that effect, um, it, it just doesn't work out at this location and consequently to have the neighborhood turn into the uh, asset that we want it to be for uh, this section of Durham County, uh, we need to move forward in, in accordance with the development plan and the plats that have already been approved. So, thank you. I'm still unclear, though, on why it's not possible. Like, is, is mm -hmm. Preservation Durham accurate that it only affects two lots out of 1,200? Well, no, it would be, we don't, we never really analyze that particular aspect of it. We just know it's in a location where, in terms of, you know, we've got to put in water, sewer, roads, all this, um, uh, as, as Ms. Carlson referred to, blasting and heavy grading has to go on in order to make this, uh, in order to make this, uh, development move forward and so uh, we've we've undertaken that and uh, I I would I wouldn't want to hazard a guess on how much you would have to prove how much how many lots would be affected by leaving the house in place but it, it's it would be something that's simply not feasible at this time given given how how much time has passed since it was originally approved it, it, it appears to me we only have two choices as a council, we can choose not to approve the development until a certain time later, allowing you to negotiate whether you can get it done or not, or we can approve the development. And it, it doesn't appear to me that 30 days, 60 days is going to be sufficient time. 30 days, I think, is at the most that I, I would support it. I don't know what that does for your, your development plans. Uh, but beyond that, I, I don't know what, what other choice we have. Uh, I don't have any assurances that Preservation Durham is going to be able to get it moved in that amount of time. It doesn't appear. Are you there? You think you can move the house in 30 days? I mean, realistically, do you really think you can move it in 30 days? No, sir. Okay. And I, I just think going much beyond that is, is, is not going to serve its purpose. Uh, it seems to me the best deal is to approve the zoning as it is. You guys sit down and see what you can work out, if there's anything you can work out, and just move on. But you don't go get it done in 30 days, and I think it's unreasonable to hold, hold this project up m much beyond that, unless you guys feel you can do that. Are, are the other recognized council Mark? Yeah, so I just wanted to point out, although this is very unfortunate, this zoning has already been, everything about this case has been approved in 2006, except for the age restriction. And uh, the only change, as I understand it, I'm going to look to staff for confirmation, but the only change really that's happened, well, two changes, because we heard the one tonight about clarifying um, the clarification on the committed element, but the significant change is on the age restriction. Everything else about this has been already um, approved by the Board of County Commissioners in 2006, and then it was accepted into the city in 2008 when it was annexed. Am I right? Um, Jacob Williams, the planning department, um, for the most part, yeah. The, the age restrictions are the, the key change. There are some other minor modifications. Um, minimum lot sizes have gone away for the single family houses. Um, the commitment to parks 
the previous plan um, committed to community parks. This plan commits to pocket parks. And um, there was a commitment regarding potential trails through the development, which is not on this plan either. So that commitment went away? The trail commitment? Right. Yes, sir, it is not on this plan. Well, thank you. Very quickly, to the Council Member Senator. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I certainly um, appreciate the whole concept of historical preservation, uh, but I think a, pro a part of historical preservation is planning and being prepared to deal with issues. So um, I would hope that maybe something can happen between the developer and Preservation Durham uh, beyond the vote that we need to take tonight, and I plan to support it. Awesome. Reese. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm a little bit confused. Maybe staff can help me. Maybe the developer can step in and answer the question. I don't know. I'm, I'm open to anyone who can answer it. If we voted to defer this matter for, let's say, 30 days, is there anything stopping the developer from demolishing the house tomorrow morning? Um, Jacob Wiggins of the Planning Department. Uh, no, sir, there's not. That, that's, that's what I thought. Okay. I just <laughs> wanted to make sure that's, I mean, I think all of us have on the council have an urge to be sympathetic to the uh, to the historic preservation concerns here, I certainly am. Um, but we can take no action tonight to give effect to those concerns. We, there is no tool in our toolbox on our agenda tonight that lets us preserve this house for 30 days or 60 days or one day. Uh, the developer has that authority right now. Tomorrow morning they go knock it down. Um, and while I hope they don't do that, I hope they'll work with historic preservation to find some time to let this last ditch effort uh, pan out. Uh, that is, frankly, neither here nor there with the vote we have to take tonight. That was my understanding going in, and I think that's ultimately where we are. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Recognize Council. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. The trail commitment. Jacob, can you talk to us about that? Sure. I was not aware of that. I don't see that here, and I'm wondering what, the, what, uh, what was the previous commitment. Well, Jacob Wiggins of the Planning Department. Uh, let me get the exact language for you. Um, so the commitment um, on the previous plan was to construct a series of mulched uh, nature trails throughout the development. Um, and these would be done in phases throughout the site. Um, and they were tied to certificate of occupancies. Um, it was broken down by three different phases of trails within the site. The intent uh, was to basically allow a variety of pedestrian movement patterns throughout the development and potentially connect to adjacent trail systems where opportunities existed. You all want to comment on that, Mr. Yeah, Zumwalt? Sure, sure. Bob Zumwalt with McAdams. A um, number of reasons why it changed. Um, one, they were mulch trails, which good hard rain, they're pretty much gone. Um, this is an age-restricted community now. Everything needs to be accessible. Trails through stream buffers that are made of mulch aren't accessible. So we removed the mulch trails. We did commit to trails in, in and around our pocket parks. We added a series of other amenities like gazebos, cabanas, a fitness room, a social room, bocce court, tennis courts, community gardens, pickleball. So we changed the rec commitment. Two of those. Yeah. Let's, let's be clear. You did not do all those things. Sure, sure. To, w those are things we would select from, but the, the type of amenity we're talking about is a, is a major amenity that goes with one of these communities. So it would, it's a change in, in the rec program. The mulch trails, I mean, they're no longer accepted by the city anymore as credit for an uh, active open space anyway to, to be paid. Thanks, that was helpful, I appreciate it. I saw over 55 people that we, we actually like mulch trails, but I'm good with it. <laughs> okay, we have any other questions, comments? If not, the public hearing is closed. The matter is back before the council. Member Proctor moves and second. All in favor of the motion, then kept by saying aye. Aye. 
Aye. Those opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Move the consistency statement. Second. It's been properly moved and second. All in favor of the motion, indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay, uh, next item is item 17, uh, which is a public hearing on the draft 2017-2018 annual action plan. Councilman. Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council, this is uh, a public hearing on the draft 2017-2018 annual action plan. I will turn it over to Ms. Wilma Conyers, the uh, federal programs coordinator for the particulars to be read into the public record. Good evening, Mayor Bell, members of council, Wilma Conyers. The purpose of this public hearing is to receive citizen comments on the draft 2017-2018 annual action plan. The annual action plan specifies how the city of Durham will address housing and community development needs through the use of community development block grant, known as CDBG, home investment partnership, known as home, consortium funds, emergency solutions grant, known as ESG, and housing opportunities for persons with AIDS, known as HOPWA funds. The U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development has not yet notified the city of final entitlement amounts for 2017-2018. For planning purposes, the city expects to receive 1.8 million in CDBG, 800,000 in home, 160,000 in ESG, and 290,000 in HOPWA funds from HUD. The annual action plan was made available to the public for review from March 17, 2017 through April 17, 2017. Notice of this public hearing was advertised in the Herald Sun, the Carolina Times, Kapos and Kapasa newspapers and also via a general listserv. As a recipient of CDBG home, ESG, and HOPWA funds, the city is required to hold at least two public hearings prior to the submission of the annual action plan. The first public hearing on community development needs was held on January 17, 2017. An application workshop and release of the application for the subject entitlement funds took place on December 6, 2016. The application submission deadline was January 24, 2017. Because the final entitlement amounts have not yet been announced, grantees will have 60 days after the entitlement amounts or August 16, 2017, whichever comes first, to submit its annual action plan or consolidated plan. In accordance with HUD guidance, the city will need to submit its annual action plan by January 20, excuse me, June 26, 2017. In closing, summary of these comments from this public hearing and written comments received during the development of the annual action plan will be incorporated into the final plan. Thank you. Thank you, this is a public hearing. Um, let me ask first of the questions by Members of the council, recognize the mayor pro tem. Um, are we in compliance? Is the UDO, are, are we in compliance in terms of the UDO with HUD regulations? I thought I noticed an area where we would not be considered in compliance. And you can, you can answer that at a later time. You don't have to go through that tonight. Okay. But Thank you. look uh, and see, make, make sure that the checkoffs are. Correct. We will do that, Mayor Pro Tem. Okay. Thank you. Your, your HOPWA funds, are they been, who, who's, is the so Department of Social Service doing that now? Duke is not doing that? Is that correct? That is correct, Mr. Mayor. And how has that worked out? Well, the, the uh, contract has been uh, executed and we just had a startup meeting and it's just starting with the Department of Social Services. Okay. Uh, let me recognize persons who have signed up to speak. Uh, Jess Brandes, is that correct? Again, this is a public hearing, and I would ask is that anyone else that wants to speak 
on this item that's not signed up? You have three minutes. Good evening. Good Didn't evening. realize I was going to get called so quickly. Um, I'm Jess Brandis. I am the housing developer with CASA. Uh, on behalf of our staff, our board, and our 400-plus um, um, units throughout the Triangle, 56 of which are here in Durham, I want to thank uh, the staff for recommending us for funding for Home Chodo dollars. Uh, the dollars we are seeking in the form of $240,000 of Home Chodo money would support CASA's purchase of a 36 unit apartment building um, currently located in Durham's West End. Um, CASA's purchase of this along with an adjacent property um, would comprise a total of 79 units that will provide mixed income housing, will preserve the existing mixed income housing for Durham households up to 60% of AMI with a focus on households under 50% of AMI. Uh, this is in a fantastic location near transit, near lots of walkable amenities, and we really see this as an excellent opportunity to preserve existing affordability in Durham. Um, over half of the tenants in this, these two apartment complexes currently have rental subsidies, uh, so our fear is that if this, these developments were lost to the market, that many of these, we see this time and again, that. Um, rents go up and people with housing vouchers are forced to find another place to live. Um, the city support of our proposal to purchase um, specifically these 36 units and the other development for a total of 79 supports the city of Durham's five-year target of preserving 350 affordable units um, specifically for rental and uh, I was happy to hear Casas Denson Apartments for Veterans mentioned at the top of the program. Uh, really uh, glad to hear about the letter writing campaign for CDBG funding. Um, we've benefited um, many times from Durham's uh, allocation of those funds for our developments, and we look forward to partnering again on this project. Thank you. Recognize. Excuse me, can I ask a question? So, so could you, I'm sorry, could you clarify, you said, are you under contract to purchase these this properties? Yes. And who currently owns them? Um, Jim Pugh. Okay. And are you anticipating that there will be other city funding needed for this acquisition, or is this the only uh, fu city funding that you'll be looking for for this acquisition? We are, um, we'll make that determination based on some funding that we have, um, that we've sought from another source. Uh, we'll find out about that funding next month, uh, and we understand there's the potential for some penny for housing dollars that an application may um, become available potentially at the end of May. So um, depending on the funding source that we're waiting on, we may seek some gap financing through those dollars from the city. Funding or financing? Um, we, we'd, we'd be seeking, as we are here, a 0% loan that's either forgiven or deferred until the and, end of the year. And do you know how much that would be? Pardon me? Do you know how much that would be? Um, we're seeking from that fund about $460,000. So if we don't get that, this is from the Federal Home Loan Bank of Atlanta. Uh, we've applied to them. If we don't get those dollars, uh, then we would be, we'd consider going to the city to seek that that gap. Thank you. Uh, I recognize Larissa Seibel. Good evening. Um, I wanted to just speak on uh, the these funds as well as your city funds together uh, that uh, are so important to help homeowners, home buyers, renters, and people who are homeless. And I did want to make a couple specific comments about homeowners who need help with home repairs as well as taxes to be able to stay in their homes, although that's not being sought through these funds. But these funds are so important to the city of Durham and to the county as well to be able to help homeowners uh, maintain their homes as well as to preserve rental housing, as you've heard before, which is a really efficient use of those funds. 
as well as a pipeline for funds for people who are homeless and people with special needs. So I um, just wanted to use this opportunity thinking I'd also be here in support of the um, Citizens Advisory Committee, which is your advisory board, which has re um, recommended some additional groups to fund, including Durham Community Land Trustees, um, a community Empowerment Fund, and Step Up. And so I just wanted to encourage you to look at your advisory committee's recommendations on these funds, and also uh, maybe consider um, these funds along with your penny for housing, which were just mentioned, and um, you know, asking for advice from citizens, such as the Citizens Advisory Committee, on how we can pull these funds together to leverage other funds to make the best use of all of our housing dollars. And again, one, one specific ask is um, we have uh, come before you at your previous hearing on these funds to ask for additional dollars for home repairs. They're not in this budget uh, for these federal funds. I hope that you will put them in your budget for the penny for housing and add an additional penny for all of the needs that we have in our community. And I just wanted to hand something out to you, which is one of the homeowners who was not able to come today, um, but she has a leaking roof. It's uh, created a hole in the wall and the ceiling. Um, there is um, no, um, no, no ability to do the weatherization. They came out today. They said, first, you've got to get that roof fixed. Um, we hope somebody can do it. Habitat, uh, rebuilding together, the city, somebody can do it. Um, but I'm not sure that any of the other groups have the ability, like the city has, to address lead-based paint. And so I would hope that you would look at your repair funds um, this is uh, a person who doesn't qualify for city home repair funds right now. She's not yet 65. She's not yet 100% disabled, and her house is too old because right now you've limited your home repair funds to newer homes that don't have lead-based paint, and she's got young children in this home. So we really need the city to look at your home repair program to be able to serve homeowners like her. Thank you. Thanks, Larissa. Um, is there anyone else that wants to speak on this item? This has been a public hearing. This is the second public hearing that's required, final public hearing, and I have a question after we close it. Uh, consider the public hearing to be closed. Now, I should know the answer to this, Mr. Manager, but I'm, I, I, I'm asking questions. We, we've heard some other uses proposed for these funds, where, where does that get cranked in? When, when do we make the final decisions on how, how right. this dollar is going to be spent? Is the public, public hearing closed? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was actually going to ask Mr. Johnson or other staff members to clarify there are some specific, in some cases general, in other cases, proposed uses in this matrix, the matrix the council has received, and uh, what is the process by which other um, you know, alternatives or other options can be considered or this proposal can be amended before it's um, <coughs> filed with HUD? Uh, this, we receive comments through the public hearing. Uh, so that's one of the, this is not being asked to be adopted tonight, but this is the, the, the opportunity to provide those comments now for us to go back and review before we bring it back to the council uh, for uh, adop uh, adoption and submission to HUD. And that will be as a part of the budget process, or will that be before the, the end of the fiscal year? No, it has to be, as Ms. Kanye said, before June the 26th. And so we have to have that on approved by the council before Right, but I mean, time. will council consider any changes to this as a part of the, uh, the, the vetting yes. of, the, of the budget yes. process? So that would be the opportunity that yes. other projects would be considered and anything potentially changed out of the, the, the recommendations that are here? Yes. Thank you. And, and do remember that we did have an application process for some of the funds uh, as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I guess the, the comment about uh, Citizens Advisory Commission have, have made some recommendations, and I'm trying to figure out when do we see those recommendations. We got them? Oh. Ms. Conyers will respond. I'm sorry, what are you saying? Oh, okay. Well, Ms. Conyers. The CAC recommendations were attached to the agenda item. Well, I only have I recommendation just, I just have a memo. letter. 
I just have a memo here. I don't have anything else on there. This, we're on 17, right? Mm -hmm. The only thing I have is. Okay. All right. I, I just don't have it on mine. Recognize Councilman Moffitt. There's a couple things. The CAC comments were not just in the memo. They're incorporated into the recommendations. Isn't, isn't that correct? In other words, the draft funding chart that I saw matched up, seemed to match up with the, with the Citizens Advisory Commission's um, recommendations. The draft funding chart represents this internal review by staff. And then the recommendations from the CAC are incorporated in their letter, which differ slightly. Specifically, the CAC recommended funding for um, the Community Empowerment Fund and also Step Up Durham. Those two applicants did not meet the, 70, the average of 70% oh. as it relates to the guidelines scored by the internal staff. However, the CAC scored them accordingly as identified in the recommendation letter. I, I see those now. Thank you. I missed that. I, I, I missed the little line in that box there. All right. So, um, and so no action tonight except to take comments correct? That's correct. And I wanted to thank the Citizens Advisory Committee for the work that they've done, for the recommendations that they've made, and um, I'm looking forward to continuing to work on this. Now, the, the, the um, Ms. Seibel was uh, making recommendations. Those have probably come from the dedicated housing funds. Those don't actually have to be decided by June 26, right, since that's not federal funding. That, that is correct. That is part of your budget process. Right, okay. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you all for being here tonight. Recognize Councilman Johnson and Councilman Shule. Is that one down there? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so I wanted to specifically ask you about the request from the Durham Community Land Trustees. Um, they're the only group that were not funded that met the threshold um, by the staff. And so I was wondering um, why they are not being recommended for funding. The Durham Community Land Trustees is not being recommended with funding. One, I should share, it's a competitive process. And also, in their application, there was not leverage. They did lose points on leveraging because there were no other funds uh, that were part of this project. So um, based on the scores that are listed here, their score is pretty much equivalent to several of the other projects that were fully funded. Um, so it seems like the competition is not the only, like the, the losing points on leveraging and having competition doesn't seem to be the only qualification. So in the application for Choto funds, there were two applicants. Uh, I would not, I'd be a little bit hesitant to compare the scores uh, from that category to the scores from another category, another competition. So I'm sorry, they're, they're, um, Okay, so so under the under the home <coughs> funds, all five of those organizations aren't. I'm sorry. So there's two organizations plus the department. Hold on. Chodo and home the same thing. Chodo is a part of the home funds. Okay. We are, we are required to uh, have Chodo funds, and that is a, a separate application process for a separate part of money we're required to have. Okay, got it. So so CASA and DCLT both requested $240,000 and CASA was funded with $240,000. Correct, that's the recommendation. Okay, um, so I, I love CASA, I think they do amazing work. Um, I'm also concerned about us not supporting the land trust for a couple of reasons. They're one of the few organizations in Durham that does permanently affordable housing. Um, a lot of our projects have affordability periods, but after that, the projects are, the units are available on the market. Um, and I'm concerned about those affordability periods um, being very short and expiring, you know, in the 15, 20 years, like that's really, that's really not very much. Um, and also because the land trust preserves, um, preserves land in a way that can really hold down um, appreciation and some of the gentrification that we're seeing in Durham right now, um, because the because the land trust, the nonprofit, continues to own the land, 
um, they are able to prevent gentrification um, that we are seeing in, in areas, especially in areas where the city has been developing affordable housing like Southside. Um, so I want to strongly advocate for city support for the land trust going forward. Um, I think it's a really important organization for moving, um, moving us towards more permanent affordability in Durham. Thank you. As Councilman Shaw. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, so uh, just a question about uh, how are we, um, we, we've estimated, I think you said $1.8 million in CDBG funds. That is correct. And is that estimate lower than this year's estimate? I guess what I'm trying to find out is what are we anticipating in terms of the actions of the federal government? Not that we can predict that, but. Or maybe well, another way to ask this, Wilmer, would be, how do you make that prediction? Okay, Wilmer Conyers, with regard to fiscal year 1617, the actual entitlement amount for CDBG was $1,829,750. Because HUD has not, and they are late, we all are aware of what's happening at a national level. For planning purposes, we take a, an estimate, a round figure, to, for planning purposes um, for a competitive process. Okay, thanks. And uh, yeah, I just want to second what uh, the mayor said earlier and what Reginald has mentioned already, uh, that these funds are incredibly important to us. And the fact that they are being threatened in the federal budget is very, a huge concern. Uh, and I appreciate uh, the mayor and you, Reginald, highlighting that. Uh, and, uh, you know, we can just see this list of things that we're doing now with the CDBG funds. And so thank you a lot for raising that. Let me just ask you, uh, at least a, I believe a couple of these organizations may have been their first time or certainly one of their first times in applying for these funds, uh, Step Up and CEF. Mm -hmm. um, and neither one of them hit the threshold score. Uh, is there, uh, are we... Uh, offering to work with them in some way for the future in terms of them, you know, telling them what about their application didn't meet the threshold, how they might improve their application for future funding? Yes. As part of the application process, uh, we do offer the, before the process begins, the opportunity for nonprofits to talk with the department. Uh, once the, ab about their application, about projects, just uh, to have conversations about how we evaluate projects before the competition opens. Once the competition opens, of course, we have to follow our competition rules. Uh, after the competition has closed, we do offer the opportunity to review uh, applications with the nonprofits uh, in terms of their scores. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Are there other questions, comments by council? If not, a motion will be in order to uh, accept the comments. been properly moved and second. All in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Move to item 18, which is a public hearing on the proposed economic development incentive, the Seminary Avenue Redux LLC. Mayor Bell, members of council, Chris Stickey from the Office of uh, Economic and Workforce Development. Uh, before you is uh, Seminary Avenue Redux LLC has applied to the Office of Economic and Workforce Development for a Neighborhood Revitalization Grant Incentive. They propose to renovate an underutilized Bidet building at 1105 West Chapel Hill Street, which is located along an OEWD commercial corridor in the west end of Durham. The plan is to redevelop a former automotive center into an adaptive reuse commercial property. When completed, the 9,000 square foot building will be transformed into two floors. The first floor will be transformed into an event space, and the second floor will be converted into 11 office suites used for, used for professional space, six for non-profit slash artist space, and community space. The rents for the space, the, the rents for space will be for non will be affordable, and the community suite will not be associated with the rental fee. 
The building is projected to complete approximately 15 jobs over a five-year period. The proposed project will produce approximately $1.1 million in private investment with uh, 100,000 in city funding, producing an 11.8 to 1 ratio of private to public funding. The total project cost would be $1.2 million. Uh, staff, the proposed project of funding will address an underutilized commercial building located along the West Chapel Hill Street Commercial Corridor. Staff endorses this project, which will be a major step in continuing of the transformation of the West Chapel Hill Street Commercial Corridor. Uh, what I also like to say, during the past three years, this council has uh, supported several projects along that West Chapel Hill Street corridor. Uh, one was a $220,000 uh, commitment with Self-Help Ventures Fund for a streetscape uh, project along there. And there we currently have a 10,000 square foot retail space building and a 33,000 office space. In addition to that, uh, recently, uh, last year about this time, we made a commitment to Habitable Space LLC to convert a underutilized gas station from a 1,200 square foot uh, space to approximately uh, 2,100 square feet. And that project is approximately 75% complete. I expect that project completed approximately and uh, by the end of uh, June 30th, uh, 2017. In addition to that, uh, the city also contributed $49,000 to Seminary Avenue uh, LLC to redevelop another gas station along that site right across the street where the city made the $225,000 investment. And that project will be finished by June 30th and it's approximately 65% complete. I'm here to have any address any questions from the council. Uh, you've heard the staff report. This is a public hearing matter. Would ask other questions by members of the staff. We do have persons that have signed up to speak on this item. If not, then I'll recognize the persons who have signed up to speak. Uh, Naomi Walker, is she present? Uh, Charlotte Ames, Arms? I don't oh, Am Ammons, okay. Sorry about that. And Cynthia Hill and Nick Johnson. Is there anyone else that wants to speak on this item whose name I've not called? If not, you can follow in this sequence. Uh, each of you have three minutes. Thank Let's you. Just state your name and address again, please. Thank you, uh, Mayor Bell and council members. I'm Cynthia Hill and I reside at 303 Watt Street and I am the managing member for Seminary Avenue Redux. And I am a filmmaker and part-time real estate developer that's been in Durham for 18 years. And I own a company called Marque Media, and we are responsible for a series called A Chef's Life that's on PBS and other documentaries that you may see on HBO, one most recently called Private Violence. And um, A Chef's Life is one that is um, pretty successful, I would say, for as documentaries go and series go, we have a viewership of about four million per episode and we are entering our fifth season and we're excited to announce that Durham is going to host our premiere party in September for the series this year. So we are a very ambitious group of filmmakers and artists who have been working really hard to make a life here in Durham when the resources may not have been here for filmmakers and to support the community. So we've, we've been really um, thoughtful in that process of trying to bring up the community at the same time. So I have with me different members of that team that can talk about different things that we're working on and I'm excited to introduce them as we go along. Um, Charlotte Ammons, who is right here she is one of the producers of A Chef's Life. She's also producing a new series that we got funding from the National Black Program Consortium to do a pilot on Chef Ricky and Saltbox. So we're trying to bring what we know and what we've been making successful in Eastern North Carolina here to Durham. So she can talk about that project, which is really exciting. So um, I also have here 
Naomi Walker, who is the new executive director of the Southern Documentary Fund, and that's a nonprofit organization that we formed how long ago now? 15 years ago here in Durham to serve the community of filmmakers and, and documentary artists here. And we have been without a home for a little while. We've been working out of my kitchen, and I think everybody's been tired of that. It's, uh, you know, we're needing a place to, to go. And so we um, saw the building at 1105 West Chapel Hill Street and saw the potential there in that space. And it was, you know, we, we thought about downtown, but downtown was just, you know, too expensive. We couldn't afford to do something in the downtown loop area. So we started looking out in those corridor spaces like this, this area uh, on West Chapel Hill Street and exciting to see all the stuff that's going on there. And am I already out of time? Bad gone, that was quick. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I'll let them finish the story. <laughs> so Charlotte, you wanna come up? Good evening, Council, Mayor, citizens. My name is Charlotte Ammons, as Cynthia mentioned. I'm a, a member of the Marquet Media Production team, and I'm a working artist also on my own right here in Durham. I reside at 108 um, Forestwood Drive here. Um, as Cynthia mentioned, I'm excited to be spearheading uh, our season five premiere party for uh, Chef's Life, uh, which, as Cynthia said, airs on PBS, which she, and she did not mention that she's an Emmy Award winning director of A Chef's Life. Um, but uh, we're excited to bring a portion of our 4.2 million viewers here to Durham and show them what Durham is all about and what we have to offer through our food and, um, and arts and culture here. Um, some of our supporters for the, uh, the premier party who have already committed are 21C Museum Hotel, uh, Durham's uh, Visitors Bureau, who I had a meeting with today, who, who signed on to help us out as well as um, um, 21C Business Bureau and some of the restaurants here like Piedmont um, and uh, Carolina Theater will actually be the, ho the home for the actual screening and we hope to get uh, all 1,000 of those seats filled and uh, hopefully have some overflow, but we'll save y'all some seats. Um, Marquet Media represents the present and future of documentary filmmaking. One of the reasons I'm part of this team is because I'm excited about creating a hub for documentary filmmaking here in Durham, alongside Full Frame Film Festival, alongside Southern Documentary Fund, and Center for Documentary Studies. Um, and uh, the, the larger goal, I think, I'm speaking on behalf of Cynthia and her larger dream right now, is to create a home for documentary filmmaking, not only in the South that tells true stories of the South that often go untold, but also tell stories that really affect and progress the fabric of uh, our country. So I'm really, really proud to be a part of it and by supporting this project, that is what you're supporting. So thank you for your time. Hi, Council, thanks so much. Um, I'm Naomi Walker, residing at 208 West Lavender Avenue. I'm the Executive Director of the Southern Documentary Fund. We help documentaries get funded, made, and seen. Uh, we're a nonprofit that is an artist service organization that supports doc filmmaking, um, supports Southern storytelling. And um, it's no question that Durham is uh, being seen more and more in the documentary, the national documentary community as a hub for Southern storytelling. We recently hosted Firelight Media, led by Stanley Nelson. They host the um, Southern Documentary Fund and UNC TV, co-hosted their annual retreat here in Durham two weeks ago. Um, at Southern Documentary Fund, we have our annual artist convening coming up June 9th to 11th, where um, doc filmmakers from across the South come. This is our fourth year, this will be our fourth year doing the artist convening and learn from industry professionals, best practices and ideas and ways to um, get their films funded, made and seen. Uh, we have the support of the Durham Arts Council, the North Carolina Arts Council, Z. Smith Reynolds Foundation and um, Mary Duke Biddle Foundation. Um, and we uh, have a grant that we give to doc filmmakers and we fiscally sponsor films. We're proud to be part of the hub that Cynthia Hill is building here at uh, 1105. Thanks so much.
Council, uh, Mayor, thank you for taking the time to listen to us talk about this. Uh, my name is Nick Johnson. I live at 508 South Buchanan Boulevard, um, about a block from the property that we're discussing. Uh, my wife, Rochelle, and I own and operate the cookery, um, which is a culinary incubator. Um, we help culinary entrepreneurs uh, start businesses here in Durham. Um, also, uh, that business has a, a, an event space in the front of it, uh, which helps to subsidize the not-so-profitable endeavor of attempting to help food entrepreneurs start food businesses, which, um, which is more of a passion project. Uh, we will uh, hopefully occupy the first floor of this building we're discussing, uh, and Cynthia has very generously offered uh, to um, help us with the upfit cost with half of the money that, uh, that you uh, hopefully will grant her uh, from the city. Um, this is an exciting uh, moment for us to be able to, um, to expand the cookery uh, into this space, which will make it um, far more sustainable, allow us to increase our staff, um, and allow us to continue to support the, the growth of uh, Durham's culinary scene. Um, so I, I urge you to, to, uh, to vote in support of this, and, um, and then uh, and thank you for your time. Uh, let me ask, are there other persons that want to speak on this item, to be in a public hearing? If not, let the record reflect no one else has to speak. Uh, the public hearing is closed. Back to the Council for comments, action. Recognize Councilman Shule, Councilman Davis, the Mayor Pro Tem in that order. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is a great project. Uh, it's very exciting. Um, and uh, I've had the chance to be in the building recently, and uh, it, the First floor is very different than what it used to look like the last time I was in there when it was an automotive shop. Uh, and uh, it just, uh, you all have really, you know, I think you're gonna do something great there. And it's great to have these, uh, the, these nonprofits up on the second floor and your production company. And I also wanna just say, Chris, I know you have been instrumental and the, you and the department have been instrumental in, in the changes in this quarter that I think are really positive. And I just want to thank you for your work and the work of the department in making this happen. Thank you. And I think it's, this is an, another real positive step. So I'm looking forward to voting for it, Mr. Mayor. Recognize Councilman Davis. Um, thank you very much. Um, can you give me some sense of uh, the kind of buy-in or outreach? I know there was a comment made about um, having representation that would reflect what Durham and this country are all about. Uh, have you all reached out to what some people might refer to as the traditional West End community? Um, and for instance, um, uh, have there been any, has there been any outreach to some of the congregants at um, Mohit Baptist or uh, First Calvary, uh, folks who may have spent their lives living in that community and whether or not they see this as a positive activity also we have met with the birch avenue association and um, also the pack three and also the um let me get the name correct it's uh the southwest central durham quality of life group and presented the project with them and talked about how to work together to bring the community together and offer what we do as a resource and there's an opportunity for us to have more community dialogue. And there's a really interesting project that I, I think that if, um, knock on wood, that we may be getting some funding from a very major national funder to do, um, let's, okay, yeah, let, name it, yeah, come on. Yeah, we're, we're starting a program in 2018, a uh, Southern Documentary Fund called uh, Civic Cinema where we're inviting the public to pitch documentary stories to um, filmic, uh, groups of filmmaking uh, film students with a mentoring filmmaker um, to, put for, to make short film content um, about people in the triangle and stories in the triangle as well. If I may follow up. Um, sure. I'd like to hear more about, and I don't want to prolong this, but sure. um, 
whether or not those traditional African Americans who may have been in that community for long periods of time uh, are seen as a part of the revitalization that will be going on and the uh, activities that will go on through filmmaking as well as through uh, food um, involvement. Um, will this become a, a wonderful story about a foodie town uh, that would not include some of the people who've been traditional cooks? I'm glad you asked that. Well, um, um, Councilman Davis, we've been, I, I've spent six weeks in New York as a part of the National Black Program Consortium's incubator program, developing a new docu-series or whatever form it'll take, docu-series or full-length documentary about, um, that features Saltbox, but really explores uh, what Saltbox represents sitting on a one-way street and that uh, divide that it represents between new culinary culture in Durham and uh, the the old old foodways that al are always endangered here. I'm from from Mount Olive, North Carolina, but um, so through Chef's Life, I learned a lot about like the effort to preserve those foodways. Um, so a, a really important part of this particular project is not only to explore um, uh, endangered foodways that include a lot of uh, Black culinary traditions that are just important to me personally, but also um, uh, expand that to look at endangered um, black culture that is quite often co-opted or um, just in danger, uh, 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 just be in the moment that we live, I guess is the best way to say it. I, I appreciate that. I will be able to tell my mother-in-law who grew up in Wayne County that someone from Mount Olive is involved with this. I'm Duplin County, Mount Olive, just, okay. but, okay. but we, we cousins. I, okay. I, I get your point. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yes, yes, ma'am, pickle, pickle country. <laughs> and if, if you don't mind if I can follow up, it's really important for us as, uh, through the Southern Documentary Fund, and also through me creating Marque Media to tell stories of the South, are to bring voices like Charlotte onto the team, because I can't tell that story she's gonna have to tell that story. People of color are gonna have to tell their own stories and that's what we talk about um, all the time is that we have to tell our own stories and that's how we preserve our culture is being able to own and tell our own stories. And so it's really important for us as a team and also as a community to make sure that we give those artists the opportunities to do that and to be successful at doing that. Um, I, I want, wanted to speak directly to um, specifically in that neighborhood. Um, we have had the opportunity to host um, the Arazak Islamic Center in our space for some of the um, gatherings that they do in, in feeding um, folks in the neighborhood and, and, and members of that community, as well as the um, Pauli Murray Project and um, all the folks that are. Um, have been working to restore Pauli Murray's house, which is just down the street. Um, so we, we use our event space for things like that when we have an opportunity to include the immediate surrounding community um, because we feel like that's an important part of being a good neighbor. So. Well, uh, you cleared up some information for me. Uh, but what is the exact September date? It's just. Is there any specificity when this September? What aren't you having to make that deadline? Okay. Is that you mean for construction? Or September? Were you having some other? Oh, event? oh, the premiere party. Yeah. Oh, our season premieres on um, PBS. The season starts the end of September, so we're having our premiere party here. Uh, in Durham, because our most of our team that makes this the That's show the is here. That's the date I want. Mm -hmm. When is the premiere? Oh, it's um, the party date. Sunday, September tenth. Sunday, That's September tenth. September tenth. At three p.m. at the Carolina Theater. Wow. Oh well, we'll we'll bring some cake. Three p.m. <laughs> Maybe we can get so Vivian Sunday to make us a cake. Have a party on Sunday. Any, any more down on that man? Recognize. Councilman Johnson and Councilman Shule. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, thanks, y'all, for being here. I want to, um, so I live in the West End also, so um, have been watching, you know, the neighborhood change a lot over the last 15 or so years that I have been um, in West End and Birch Ave. And so while I'm, I'm excited about the development, I'm also concerned, right, because we see a lot of neighborhoods in Durham where um, this sort of development is leading to um, price appreciation and rent appreciation in surrounding neighborhoods. I think in West End we're in a better position than some other communities because there have been a lot of investments by affordable housing developers like the Land Trust and Self Help and Habitat in the community. Um, but I think my other, the other thing I want to make sure that we're that we're thinking about with development is that the projects, both the projects, the construction of the projects and the projects themselves long term are benefiting residents of the community. Um, and so I'm excited about the commitments y'all have already made about affordable space, free community space, the collaborations with groups in the neighborhood. Um, and I want to ask you to um, give us a little bit more specificity around um, those jobs, wages and benefits for those jobs, um, both the construction jobs and jobs that you plan to be created by the project, and also um, any kind of commitments to um, hiring folks from the neighborhood, training folks from the neighborhood that you might be able to make um, in conjunction with the project. Um, first, I just want to say th thank you um, that we all live in that community or close to that community. And so seeing the development that's going around us is exciting and scary. And so for us, it is important to have property and to be able to um, you know, preserve things and keep it as part of the community. And we're, we're using it. You know, I'm the developer, but I'm also the user of the property. And I think that makes a huge difference in how you treat it and what you're doing with it. And everyone that is going to be involved with it, you know, the, the space is going to be full. We all are part of that community, and we all believe in that community. And you know, we're working with all the neighborhood associations, and um, the quality of life group folks. And we, you know, we we talk to them about things that we can do to to bring in the community, let them use the space, um, you know, for meetings, things like that, fundraising events. You know, those things are you know. There, that those things are easy for us to do. Bringing in the community, bringing in local talent, that's something that we're working on too, and that's something that we're talking about trying to do uh, with, as part of the Southern Documentary Fund, and that's how we, we are growing in like the, the, the civic, what did you, cinema. civic cinema, and, and different projects like that are purposefully um, the, what, what drives us is our sense of community and wanting to be here and stay here and tell those stories and have the people who live here also be able to work um, with us. And so we are trying uh, to, to find talent. It's hard, you know, but we're also trying to train that talent and the jobs the jobs that we have, we're trying to uh, do an internship program, and that's something that that Naomi can talk about, bringing folks from the community into this internship program. And an intern that is currently working there at SCF, she's now going to be doing some editing jobs for us on the side, and we're going to try her out and see if we can develop that talent pool. Because I'm a big believer that the talent and the resources are here. And we can make those talent, that talent, we can grow that talent. And we can bring resources from outside to help us grow that talent and keep that talent here. So that's important for us. And yeah, we're working on that. We haven't got it figured out yet, but we're working on it. We're, you know, we're still young. I mean, I've, I've been doing this for a long time, but for a long time I was kind of by myself. And so we're now finally at a place where we can hire people and we can really be thoughtful in that process of the projects that we're taking on board and the people that we're bringing on board to work in those positions to make those projects. I just uh, would just add that I know, I'm fairly new to Southern Documentary Fund, but I do know that two of our makers uh, live within two blocks of the building, um, two of the makers that we fiscally sponsor. 
Um, and also, um, uh, we have two staff at SDF that are longstanding residents of Durham, um, Jasmine Bowles and Lana Garland. And we share Jasmine Bowles with Village of Wisdom. She's our operations manager. And um, so it's definitely about forging that sense of community. Thank you, that's um, really helpful. Could you talk about wages and benefits briefly also? Um, well, well, I can, I appreciate your raising those concerns. They are, um, they are very poignant concerns to myself as well. I moved into the West End 13 years ago and um, before my wife and I started the cookery, we bought um, as many of the empty houses as we could in that neighborhood and restored them. We now have uh, 12 rental homes, half of which we keep at as low income housing because we didn't want to see houses flipped in that neighborhood and we didn't want to see the people who lived in that neighborhood pushed out. Um, we moved into that neighborhood because we loved it and we love the people there. We also currently employ folks that do live uh, on Chapel Hill Road just to our, I guess, west. Um, but we, uh, at the cookery, we pay above a living wage for the standard here in Durham. Um, we do that at all of our businesses and believe in that. Um, so for our part, that's what we'll be doing. Same with us at SDF. Yeah. Don't get that later. Great, thank you. Councilman awesome. Shul. I'm going to ask the one of the questions that Jillian asked earlier, but I'll, I, I don't think you spoke to this, which is you mentioned the community space, and could you speak to its potential uses? Sure. Um, what we have found just through our needs, uh, we need a meeting space quite frequently, a conference room that allows us to meet, our board meet, or just have people come in and look professional. So that's a space that we want to be able to offer to not just the filmmakers, but also to the community. We've offered that space to, to PAC 3. We've also offered that space to the Birch Avenue Association for monthly meetings or whenever they might need it if they're not wanting to meet at the co-op. So, uh, which is kind of a fun space to meet in anyway. But it's something that we see a lot of value in having that that kind of space that people can sign up for, associations can sign up for, because you just need to be able to have you know, space to be able to conduct business in. And that for us as um, professionals trying to go to that next level, we need that also in the building. We're, we're trying to plan for a screening space so that filmmakers can bring in potential funders or potential partners and screen their work in a professional setting, so that's something that filmmakers would be able to sign up for if, they, if they're working out of the kitchen like I was doing for a really long time. So we see a lot of value in being able to offer that to the rest of the community. That's Councilman Reese. Mr. Mayor, I didn't have any questions for the folks who spoke, but I, I just didn't know if we were gonna move on to talking about the ultimate issue. The public hearing closed. Did we do that? Great, okay. Um, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first of all, I want to say I'm a huge fan of a lot of what you guys do. Um, I feel like I've watched those uh, kids grow up on A Chef's Life. Um, I went to an event at the cookery uh, in support of our local Planned Parenthood affiliate a couple years ago that was extraordinary. Um, and so I want to say how much I appreciate the work that all of y'all are doing here in Durham. Um, when we talk about economic incentives in some of these targeted uh, community development areas, I think all of us are mindful of the fact that over the last 10 years or so, uh, the city of Durham specifically invested considerable public funds uh, in uh, the renaissance of our downtown core. And I think all of us uh, can walk around uh, inside the downtown loop and see the benefits that that has brought to the city. Uh, and if we cross the downtown loop and go into some of the residential neighborhoods that ring the downtown core, we can see uh, some of the problems that the success in downtown term have caused uh, for the folks that live in those neighborhoods. Uh, gentrification is a real problem in many places, including uh, Council Member Johnson's own neighborhood um, and a number of the other neighborhoods that ring the downtown core. And so when we talk about economic development incentives inside these uh, development areas, I think all of us are especially mindful of the consequences that that can have uh, for the people and businesses that are already there. Um, and so uh, it's with that in mind, um, that I say that I, I do intend to support the, the 
pr proposal that's before us tonight, um, primarily because I think, uh, number one, you've you made a solid case for the community benefits that flow from this investment of, of public funds um, in this particular property. Um, it's it the plan that you've put forward uh, is sound from that perspective. I also want to say how much I appreciate the fact that of the 1.28 million dollars of capital for the project, nearly 300,000 of that comes from the applicant yourself. You've committed that funding. That's important to me because it shows you're not just playing with other people's money. Uh, you actually have skin in this game and that, that's really important. Um, it's also important to me that the, um, the particular, the slice of funding that comes from the, the, the uh, pr proposal that comes from the city uh, is, is modest in comparison to the entire project itself. Um, I think it was about 11 point something to one was the, was the ratio I heard, which is also good to hear. You're not leaning on the city uh, for an, un, for an uh, un, unduly outsized portion of the, of the project. And so I just want to say how much I appreciate the work that you're doing, the fact that you've been mindful about community engagement. I know that you'll continue to do that. Um, and especially about paying uh, living wage and above to the folks that, that do work for you. Uh, that's something that all of us are, are very, very concerned about in Durham. And while we don't have the ability to mandate that within the city limits, we do appreciate when folks come to us asking for our support that they do that for their own employees. Um, and so I do intend to support the measure. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, uh, I appreciate my colleagues' very probing questions. I appreciate the responses that uh, you gave back. I just had one question about the financing. Um, how, how, how close are you with Fidelity? That seems to be your main finance. Is there any hitches with that? Uh, is that pretty much a given? Uh, yeah, yeah, they're committed, they're committed to okay. the funding. Mm -hmm. right. uh, you, you said you were committed, but you say you were still requesting. That's why I didn't know if they. Oh, yeah, yeah, we have. Um, it's a construction loan that will turn into a permanent okay. mortgage once uh, construction is done. All right, great. If there are no further questions, entertain a motion on item. It's been propped and moved and second. All in favor of the motion and kept it saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, Thank you all. Who's doing the consistent statement? I was going to say. We're pulling item number nine. That's what I was going to. <coughs> Councilman Moffitt pulled item nine. I was trying to pull it up. Uh, yes, sir. At 4.32 this afternoon, I received a memo. We received a memo that said that the item had been altered in the packet, but the um, when I downloaded the new attachments, there was no indication of what those changes were. I asked for a copy of the red lines and didn't receive them, so I need to find out why or what's been modified. I'm sure it's fairly innocuous, but I, I don't want to vote on something until I know what it is. Robert Joyner, Public Works Department. Uh, we apologize for the uh, last minute change um, there were red lines that were uploaded to iLegislate and there were some technical issues uh, earlier. That document was cleaned up, those changes were accepted. There was one change that was specifically made to the document on the first page in the whereas section and it refers to I'm the sorry, original. We the memo or the agreement? In the uh, agreement, sir. Okay. Oh, sorry. And in the agreement, okay. under that whereas section, it refers to the, the parent development company, EPCON, actually changed the LLC for this new agreement. And so the parent developer is the same, but they have simply uh, modified their limited liability company for this new agreement. And they have done that for a variety of reasons, and they've transferred those liabilities and assets from the original corp over to the other uh, or to the new limited liability company. And so my understanding is that was done for financing purposes. So you're saying that the sole impact of the changes was to change the name of the, of the LLC with which we're contracting and it's changed to Epcon, Epcon Farrington LLC? That's correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's, that was my question. And if there are no other questions, I'll move the item. It's been properly moved and second. All in favor of the motion, they keep us saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, the motion passes unanimously. Any other items to come before the council? I have Recognize the mayor pro tem. On Wednesday at 5 o'clock, the North Carolina League of Municipalities is sponsoring a tour, 
where there are tours all over the state. But this one is at Parizod, and I can invite about five more people to come if you're interested. That's a and tour? Uh, at five, on, on Wednesday, I think. That's what I plan to be in it anyway. Okay. Thank you. If nothing else, the meeting's adjourned at 9.26 p.m. Thank you.